You can understand people through their possessions and the artifacts that they make and they use in their daily lives tell a lot about them, particularly people who didn't necessarily leave written records. And a house or another building as an artifact, it's so complex that you can read all kinds of things about the people who built it, how they built it, how they used it. It, it basically tells the story of their lives. Isaiah Davenport was a master builder from New England. Well, a master builder is a person who can do some design as well as engineer the construction for the project. He's between the builder on the one hand and the architect on the other. He's right in the middle. He was born in Rhode Island and he apprenticed, we believe, in New Bedford, Massachusetts and learned the carpentry trades up in that area. A master builder typically would have gone through an apprenticeship system. Starting about the age of 14, a kid would be apprenticed to a master craftsman by his parents and would go through a period of training. Some of these relationships were quite formal. Some of them could be as casual as working with Uncle Bill, who's the builder down the street. But probably because of the level of construction and the quality of craftsmanship that Davenport demonstrates, he's probably a person who went through the more formal system of apprenticeship. And then to make his way in this world, to make his fortune, he hopped on a boat and ended up in the port city of Savannah around 1809. You can see from his background that he's coming from a very, very conservative, traditional foundation and that would have played very well here in Savannah because his clientele was of a like mind. And between 1809 and 1827, he was a master builder in the port city of Savannah. It speaks to a period of time in Savannah history between river transportation of crops uh, out into the world and then the rail, which is not yet beginning. And so it's the end of a colonial period, you might say, uh, and it's the beginning of a national period. It's sort of curious. We have silhouettes of Mr. Davenport's wife, his daughter, and his mother-in-law, but we don't have a, a picture or an illustration of what he looked like, and I think that's fairly common. Mr. Davenport was probably not of the stature to even ever have a portrait of himself. Um, so what we have to go by is, is the buildings that he built. Davenport would not have turned in the wealthiest circles in Savannah socially. He was a craftsman. He was a very good craftsman, but he would not have necessarily partied with the in crowd. I believe most of the things that he built are no longer extant, but we do have a few examples, including his, his home, his masterpiece, the Isaiah Davenport House on Columbia Square. It was not only his home, it was also his office and his calling card. He probably would have brought customers here, and as a result, put a great deal of time and detail in the craftsmanship in his own residence. So he could sell his skills to the Savannah public. I think people lose their perspective when they see the Davenport House on Columbia Square. I mean, it looks like a fine home, but it was so much larger than anything around it. It really was making a big statement about craftsmanship and his ability to build a fine house and advertising. And you can tell by the Davenport House just looking through it that he really took his time and took care to build the house properly. And he did a very good job with his construction. He knew what he was doing when he built the house. He built it to last and I'm not sure if he gets enough recognition for that. We're here at the Isaiah Davenport House and it's the most famous of the houses that the master builder Isaiah Davenport built. Um, but a local historian said that every square in Savannah had a house built by Isaiah Davenport. He was a prolific builder. And so we're going to go see a few of the houses that are remaining that he built. Um, most of those have long since gone the way of quote unquote progress. We're at, at uh, Laura's Cottage, which is purported to have been built by the master builder Isaiah Davenport. It sort of is a sharp contrast to the fine brick home that Mr. Davenport built as his calling card uh, for his household. This is um, a very modest cottage. Um, we sort of 
venture to think that this is how most people would have lived in Savannah in the 1820s. It's not a very large house. Now this house is not on its original foundation. It was moved to this property in the 20th century. Its original location is a little bit further east down State Street, so we're gonna step down to where it used to be. Now we're at 124 Houston Street. This house is attributed to Isaiah Davenport, a two and a half story over a raised basement clabbered federal style house. We didn't think there was anything left extant that Isaiah Davenport built and then we were just looking around in the historic Savannah Square notebooks and we saw the Isaiah Davenport house and it was this house, it wasn't the one over on Columbia Square. And then we did some research further and that Laura's Cottage used to be um, in the parking lot there. So, you know, it's a fairly recent to us. Other people might have known that it was a quote unquote Davenport attributed house. But if you look at it, it looks very similar. Well, all of us that um, enjoy historical research and, uh, and, and finding something new just sort of adds to what we already knew and made it more enriching. It's just really fun. This little cottage on York Street is associated with Isaiah Davenport, but is not attributed to him. This is the Clark Davenport house, and Isaiah Davenport's mother-in-law was Susanna Clark, and this is a house that Isaiah Davenport and Sarah Davenport were purported to have been married in the front room in, um, in March of 1809. So it's a point of comparison uh, with the Davenport house, again, much more typical of what people would have lived in uh, than the Davenport house. And the final two homes on our tour of, of Davenport attributed buildings are the Frederick Selig House, which is a double house at 305 and 311 West York Street. And now they're both private homes. They share a wall. They're a double house or what we would call a duplex. And from the fine woodwork and the way it, it appears, it, it can be attributed to Isaiah Davenport. Now that we've looked at a number of homes attributed to Isaiah Davenport, we're back at, at the well-known Davenport house where we will go through with some scholars and experts in the field of 19th century architecture to see what they see about Davenport and his fine home. I'm Tom Hoffman. I'm a structural engineer here in Savannah, Georgia. I'm also a professor of architecture at Savannah College of Art and Design. I'm Christopher Hendricks, professor of history at Armstrong Atlantic State University. And one of my specialties is architectural history and vernacular architecture. My name is Dave Rossell, and I'm an architectural historian. I teach architectural history at the Savannah College of Art and Design. Whenever I teach architectural history or vernacular architecture, I always like to bring students here because you can use this building as a wonderful example because it's in a preserved state. When I look at this building, I think of a, a grand architectural statement uh, that really speaks um, to the potential of Savannah society to express itself. I see, uh, I see the north coming down to the south, I see uh, America coming up to England. I see uh, a, a humble builder really uh, aspiring to be an architect. Every time you go through this building, you, you always see something different and unique, and every time you hear somebody talk about it, there's something th that you just haven't seen before, and, and it's really great. Every time I go through it, you get a better appreciation for the house. I think this house is a fabulous uh, building for its time, and its time was very interesting, 1820. Its particular style is federal, but federal was late classical and just before the beginning of the Greek Revival. I also see in the Isaiah Davenport House a little bit of a beginning of the picturesque movement, uh, the movement that came with the Greek Revival and after it, when designs became more eclectic and more diverse. Well, the Davenport House fits somewhere in between the middle class residence and the real high style residents such as William J. would have done. It's probably the finest example of federal architecture here in the city, so it's unique in that respect. But it's a more common, everyday house. It's using a typical floor plan that became popular in the 18th century. The presence of the building is very prominent. It's, uh, it's two and a half stories tall. It's on a raised basement. 
And it speaks to a kind of formality of style and elegance, which uh, would be really national in character, even international, with ideas coming from England and Europe. Well, one of the things that always strikes me about the Davenport House is the, the use of the English basement. You know, having the raised basement is practical in one respect, in that you're going to get light into the workspace of the house. It also gives you a sense of privacy by raising the living space up off of the street level. But more than that, it gives the advantage. It adds an extra story of height, which helps your statement of grandeur. Definitely. Well, the oval staircase arrangement makes for a nice visual statement too, doesn't it, Dave? It does. It reaches out and it embraces the city. And you get the oval for, uh, as a part of the motif from the federal period. Right. Correct. And then this becomes a nice uh, formal uh, sort of place to embrace the world. I think it's a neat stage set, really, uh, looking out over the square and, and uh, the city. And uh, one of the, the finest pieces of detail in this building is this, uh, this really elaborate ornamental ironwork, uh, which is uh, just delicate and light and uh, marvelously kind of rich as a statement. And then that quickly uh, takes us to these side lights uh, and to the over light, which uh, are, of course, very strong components of the federal style. And once again, you see that oval motif, which we're going to see throughout the entire house. One detail that makes the Davenport House uh, very special in Savannah is its um, unique small-sized and pressed red bricks. This is a brick that's been imported, and it has a delicacy about it, which also fits with the federal style. Structurally, it's a very good brick. It holds up well to the weather, as we can see out here, and uh, very good mortar job. They, they have the bricks nicely laid in, nice even mortar line, keeps everything from in line and not overloaded. And this is a characteristic English common bond uh, with uh, one row of headers and then uh, one, two, three, four, five rows of stretchers, then another row of headers. This is a characteristic uh, bond that the English would have brought over and the Americans used it for many generations and then gradually started stretching it out and then uh, ultimately doing away with it to the uh, American bond, which is just all stretchers. But it was imported brick, it was a delicate scale, it was meant to look uh, imported, special, unusual. And then the interior features also, I think, really call out his uh, skills and abilities in using different design motifs. Um, and the house, in some ways, is a lot like a modern uh, model home. Well, let's go inside and have a look. Great. Wow, this is wonderful.